so today I'm going to be introducing you to my pet, Spencer. He's my bestie. He really is. He's an awesome dog. I've had him for almost 13 years now. And he is a miniature pincher chihuahua mix. And yes, he's kind of an old man. And he does not particularly like it when I try to videotape him or take pictures of him. But that does not stop me from doing it. So let's just start with that. Why am I introducing you to Spencer? Well, here's why. This little guy right here is probably my number one go-to form of support and comfort when I'm feeling like crap. And he is the best napper, the best uh, don't need anything from you, just want to be your friender, the best I don't know what else he does. Actually, he doesn't do a lot more than that. Spencer is a napping dog. Like when you look at breeds of dog, you know, in the registry, it says, what does this dog do? This dog naps. He's not going to rescue you from a burning building. He's not going to fetch anything for you. He's not going to, you know, bring you some rum in the Alps. He's not going to do any of that. What he's going to do is lay with you. And I think it's fantastic. And the last, I don't know, six, seven years of my life when I've been getting, you know, progressively sicker, this dog has seen me through a ton of that. And so I would say if you're considering getting a pet and you have fibro or some other chronic illness, here are some things to think about. First of all, I think it's a good idea. Second of all, I think you want to look for a pet that takes, that has minimal care requirements. Don't, Spencer is short-haired. He doesn't need a lot of grooming. He um, he doesn't need a lot of anything, actually. That's including food. So I don't have to carry heavy uh, packs of food for him. I don't have to take him into the groomer. I don't have to brush him all the time. He has short hair, so when he sheds, it's not a huge fiasco of a mess. So look for low-care animals. I know there are cats that don't shed as much as other cats. Uh, long-haired cats, long-haired dogs, don't do it. Unless you just have a lot of time to take care of them, don't do it. God, you're getting heavy, dude. All right, go on. Um, also, I know there's actually there's hairless cats and dogs, but I, I just, I don't know how I feel about that. The great thing about Spencer is that he's also of a size where I can dress him. And I find that highly entertaining. And so I do. He has quite a wardrobe. In fact, he was David Bowie, the Ziggy Stardust years for Halloween. And I will include a photo of that next. Anyway, so consider that. Care. Low care. Yes, you could get something like a guinea pig or a hamster or even a bird. But frankly, those things all require care. But they give less benefit in terms of snuggle and cuddle and love and emotional connection. So for me, I think a dog or a cat. I, cats can't have sneezing, dogs, it's what, it's what I can have. So I got Spencer. Not more than one, although I'm sure there are people who have two that do just fine and the dogs entertain each other and that would be okay too. I'm not down with that because that's twice as much effort. Also look for a breed that is not too emotionally intensive, too emo. Like Cocker Spaniels, adorable, cute, smaller, yes. Also emo, emo dogs that pee everywhere. Emo dogs that pee everywhere. A lot of smaller breed dogs have that problem. So keep that in mind too. I, I think a lot of small dogs, not just smaller breed, but just a lot of smaller dogs have that problem. Swinzer never had that problem, thankfully. So he's also not a tiny, tiny dog. He's, he's 14, 15 pounds, so he's not like a teacup. So maybe look for that range, that size of dog. Also, I am not coordinated, and chances are good that I will trip over him at some point. Have tripped over him, and having him be a little bit larger in size has probably saved his life more than once because I am far larger than he is. Anyway, he improves my mood and my outlook. And so having an animal companion that can do that is important. Maybe you have a relationship with a bird and it's a, maybe it's like a cockatoo or something. And maybe that does improve your emotional outlook. Maybe you can be emotionally connected to a bird. 
I never have been able to be emotionally connected to a bird. In fact, I don't like birds at all. So I'm not, I would not choose a bird or a lizard or any mammal that's small enough that I could step on and kill. Again, not so coordinated. He's now reclining on the sofa. And so I would keep that in mind too. So care, size, temperament. You don't want some bitchy dog, pun intended. Um, and you don't want some emo hyper maintenance dog, or at least I don't. And I don't think you do either. Anyway, so think about these things while you are, when you are considering getting a pet, maybe you already have a pet, in which case I would love to see a picture and I would love to hear about your experiences. But the thing that I love most about Spencer is that he has this kind of sixth sense thing where he knows when I'm not feeling my best and he curls up right next to me and is like just by my side the entire time. I have to force him out of the bed to, to go eat and, and do other things, which is good because I'm going to take care of him. Um, but is also that he has a very strong emotional bond with me and I appreciate that. So anyway, so that is what I would suggest to anybody who is really struggling to stay optimistic and stay positive. Um, when they're feeling bad on a day to day basis, I, I just think pets are awesome for that because they don't have that same kind of thought process that leads to extra drama. They just don't have it. Don't have the capacity. Aren't going to have the capacity. You can sit there and be like, oh my God, my life is over. And you can list 18 ways that's going to that's gonna be true for you. But with Spencer, he's like, hey, can I have a bone? How about a nap? And that's it. And really, it he doesn't require a lot of me either and when I'm feeling my worst interacting with him like basically involves doing this no complicated conversations about world peace no no questions and answers no algebra no nothing he's terrific like that so pets for people who are living with chronic illness thumbs up not great Danes not anything too hairy like a sheepdog, but pets in general. All right, tell me your story about your pets. What have your pets done for you? Have your pets saved you from a burning building? Okay? Okay. Talk to you later.